So Dilwa Rahman is pitching for £400,000 of funding for what on the face of it is a bog standard, uh, permitted development, commercial to residential conversion deal. But sometimes PD opportunities are not quite what they seem. Stay tuned to find out more. This pitch was first shown on the hit Sky TV show Property Elevator. Now what I'm going to show you is the pitch as it was seen on TV and I'm going to stop and freeze the action every now and then to give you the benefit of my sort of uh, analysis and commentary and key learning points about the deal. Now if you don't have Sky or missed the show when it went out on TV, uh, we have created a playlist of all these analysis videos. It is an essential watch for any serious property investor. You learn plenty from it. We'll put a link in the description below. If you're new to this channel and you're watching this for the first time, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We put out lots of videos each and every week all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investing game. So let's crack on and I'll hand you over now to Elizabeth Warburton, the show's presenter, who meets Dilwa before he comes in to pitch to us angels. Hello, welcome to Property Elevator. Thank you. Is there anyone in particular that you'd like to work with? Well, anyone. I just need the experience. So I'm a very new to the property um, um, investment. So obviously it's very important for me to have one of the angels so then they can walk me through like a baby steps. Yeah, so I can, for sure. Yeah, you, I can use the knowledge, expertise, and so that, that can be guiding me through for the, my next future generation as well. well best of luck Thank we're you. going to send you in shortly yeah relax take your time you'll be fantastic thank you and i will speak to you when you get out will do all right wish me luck good luck thank you <laughs> i the deal i have got today is a res, uh, commercial to convert uh, residential conversion yeah which is based in portsmouth uh, based in fairham town center the property asking price on the market is £275,000 and I managed to put an offer forward £280,000 subject to planning and all that. Uh, the reason I put the £280,000, there is a lot of interested parties going on. There is a she, the, the uh, estate agent, the lady, she already told me that people are interested to buy this property on a cash. So she said, if, you, if I really want to do, win the bid, I need to think about something over the asking price. Now, first of all, folks, don't get too excited by estate agent BS, shall we say. Um, they will always make out that there's tons of interest in every single property. There always is. And they will always uh, encourage offers over the asking price. The important thing is not to get too excited by what the estate agent is saying, but always look at the fundamentals what is the property worth to you? In other words, uh, what can you do with it? Um, what are the costs of getting there? How much profit do you need to make? And you're left with basically the maximum price you can pay for it. That's essentially it. She said somebody already close to us. Or perhaps have an angel help you. That's what I'm here Absolutely. for. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're here I for. Need a cash, I Absolutely. need a cash buyer. Absolutely. Well I need done. a cash buyer. Yeah. Good. This building's a three stories building. Yeah. So the ground floor is 139 square meter long. And uppers to uh, rented to at the moment is to an office, which they pay a 6,000 per annum. Yep. And this is a, 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 a law society business law lease at the moment. And their lease already ran out. 31st of October 20, 2018, but landlord had had some discussion with them by renewing it, but nothing has been okay. confirmed. So that's what's read. called holding over. So they, when you when someone's holding over a lease, um, they wait. You know, it's, it's it's run out, but they're still in situ and they're still paying the rent, which is fine. It's not a problem. So purchase price, I put offer on 280,000. Yep. Hasn't been confirmed whether it's been accepted or not. Okay. The conversion cost from two builders I had so far, um, the, the guy, obviously we couldn't go and visit the property yet, uh, the upstairs because there's a tenant and they, she, the landlord, uh, the uh, agent, she said to me, 
if my offer been accepted, they will make an appointment with the uh, tenant, and yes. then we'll go around that's, with our that's builders. Quite, that's quite normal. So they work the price out from the from the plans, have they? He, they we haven't. The, uh, he estimated the yes, builder. Yes, that's I, fine. Sh I showed him the uh, the yeah. floor plan, and he gave us eighty thousand roughly. Yeah, that's including fine. That's the for 18. the moment. That's absolutely fine. Not a problem. And I put the contingency on that sixteen thousand on twenty percent. Yeah, and right. um, the professional stamp duty legal planning cost another twenty six thousand pound approximately, mm -hmm. and total cost four hundred two thousand pound and two hundred. Yep. And total GDB on this is five hundred sixty thousand to six hundred forty thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, developer profit is one hundred fifty seven thousand eight hundred to two hundred forty thousand forty two thousand eight hundred. Profit on GDV uh, on the cost is 39% to 59%. Very good. And completion time, the builder said he can finish it within uh, three to four months, but I thought, I said, no, it's not realistic. So I'll probably say six months. Sounds so cool. I'm looking exit here between eight to 12 months maximum. Okay, lovely. Okay. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. So far, it's quite a confident pitch. I like the way he has uh, basically um, summarized very briefly and succinctly all the important facts. This currently is a sui generis building, what? which doesn't Which benefit, means what, Nanjan? Uh, which, uh, it, because uh, they, it was a casino type place. So what a sui generis, what, what's the explanation of sui generis? Well, it's, it's a usage class, commercial property usage class, which is not usage class E. So right, it's, okay. it, it, it's there's no PD for that. Right, got gotcha. you. Yeah. She already got the E on. I it. know. I'm coming to that. Okay. And this is the thing that many of the buyers will miss. Right. There's planning permission for conversion to Class E, which was obtained or granted in, on the 7th of September 2021. Yeah. Now, what you want to use to get that flat on the ground floor, right, is um, a, a, a Class MA PD conversion. Yeah. But one of the nuances of that, it needs to have been in use as a Class E building for two right. years prior to your application. Okay. So most people and a lot of planning consultants would miss that key point. Okay. So the flat on the ground floor is going to be very, very hard to achieve um, unless you sit there for two years. Okay. So. You, b you will get, because the upper space is offices, you will get those two one-bedroom flats. Yeah. Uh, so you'll need to work that into your costing model when you look at what you can do in a, in a reasonable space of time. And the other area... So this is a key point, really, with all this permitted development. Permitted development is undoubtedly the biggest opportunity for property investors right now. You, it allows you to take defunct commercial spaces, convert them to residential use with the minimum of hassle, uh, provided your commercial buildings meet predetermined criteria as set out in the permitted development legislation. That is the important thing. And all that is commercial cannot necessarily be converted to residential use. So the key, the key to playing this game and being successful at this game is to equip yourself with the knowledge, to actually learn exactly what is what commercial buildings are easy to get permitted development um, for uh, and focus on those because there are enough of those. Uh, people who are not educated, who are not clued up on what you can and can't do with permitted development, often go down blind alleyways and look at what, what appears at first glance to be a PD deal, a permitted development deal, but isn't. The devil's in the detail and the nuances. You've got to remember one thing. Councils, local authorities do not like permitted development. They do not want you to exercise your permitted development rights. See, council planning departments, they are called development control departments. They want to control development in their area. And what central government have done is taken that control completely out of their hands by, by central government coming up with national permitted development rules that kind of rough shot over uh, local authorities. And they hate that. So what they will do is local authorities will look at any reason they can find not to grant you permitted development. There may be a housing shortage and all of that, but the councils are playing their little games 
and they simply do not want you to exercise these permitted development rights. So as a developer, when you are looking at any commercial property deal, you've got to make sure it's a slam dunker. You've got to make absolute sure that PD permitted development rights allow you to convert that particular building, um, that particular site, with all its past usages and nuances and everything like that into residential use. Because if you don't tick, if you can't put a solid tick in every one of the permitted development rights criteria, then you will fail to get your permission. So uh, where do you get this knowledge? Where do you get this training? Well, I run the UK's leading commercial property training course, uh, specializing in all aspects of commercial property, including commercial conversions under the new permitted development rules. It's an eight week uh, course. Thousands of people have been through it already uh, and are actually using this knowledge to convert commercial buildings to residential use up and down the land. If you want to find out more and if you want to join this course and basically give yourself a leg up, give yourself the confidence to pursue permitted development opportunities with the knowledge that you are actually going to get these permitted development deals through, then sign up today. Limited spaces are available. It's succeedingproperty.com forward slash workshop. I was fascinated by was your build cost because we've got 80 grand to do three one bedroom flats, which is 26K a flat. And if you can do one bedroom flats for 26K a flat, I'll actually give you 35K and you can do mine. Oh. Because that's a great, that's an that's okay. offer as, I'll make to you because I, I said, can't do them for 26. Thank you very much. But as I said, the, the builder, he gave you a rough estimation because we couldn't no. go into the property okay. and he doesn't know. I think my point is that that will of, uh, affect yeah. the figures yeah. okay. um, because that's very under. If, so even if we take the 35,000, let's say 40,000 each uh, property, uh, the apartment three yeah. to 120,000, still we got quite a handsome profit in there after taking... You can only do two flats though, unless uh, you keep on, the... On this one other thing I was going to ask you, if you I added the 96, which is the next door, and also 88 and 92, the both of them exactly the same shop, that one here mm. and that one there, they're both exactly the same shop, same exactly. Mm. What they did, they did the planning application and the both of them, there's a, one of them got two bedroom at the back of the shop and one of them got one bedroom and it's been sold off. Yes, but uh, what on the, usage class are they? Uh, they they, they the, weren't too generous properly. They, they was, I don't, I'm not sure what they were before, but they did full planning application. I spoke to the K8 KD architect who did that. They said, yeah, they exactly were the same. And uh, I asked him what's the chances of my our one. He, he, he said, yeah, it's not a problem at all because all of this on this street, they're exactly the same layout of the shop and they have done a planning application. And I said, how long will you roughly you think is going to uh, take the planning process? He said, it's gonna, not going to take more than three to four months because the, uh, the firm council is quite good. So it's with, the with latest planning. is six months. With, with planning, um, it, it's not just what the layout is, it yeah. is also what the use is. It's most importantly what the use is. So. What Ranjan's saying is that the use of those two shops might have been A1, A2. They might have come under certain PD rights, and that's why they got the rights to convert it. Right. This okay. one was a sui generis use, which is an all other class. It okay. covers all sorts of things that don't fall within yeah. some of the standard planet right. classes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And that's why it won't have had those PD yeah. rights. Right. I think okay. we have to you. accept that the king of PD has spoken. <laughs> that's why uh, I'm here because I haven't got knowledge. No, I'll, I'm, and I'm learning as well. So but don't a lot worry of about people that. would have missed that, and I yeah. bet you. Good. Thank you, for, thank you very much for pointing and out. They will have missed that. Yeah. Thank you very I much for pointing out. I mean, a couple of things to point out, and um, the figures that were presented on this deal really completely torpedo the profitability. The bill costs are far too low. Um, it's near double that to to construct uh, flats. The other thing, of course, is that if you can't do the ground floor flat under permitted development, then uh, that obviously affects the end values. So you, your costs are higher, your end values are lower. So, you know, wh wh where's, the, where's the profit? The point on planning permission is very, very important. When you're a small time developer, you don't want to take too much risk. And planning is risky. Why? Because you've got no idea, A, whether or not you're going to get planning permission and B, how long it's going to take. Now you speak to some architect and they want the fee. They will whack in the planning application. They want your business. So they want to give it a shot. You know, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're likely to get it. Just because uh, a building next door has had planning permission or permitted development, it doesn't necessarily mean yours will. You see, 
we unlike residential property see with residential property if your neighbor has got an extension and they got it two years ago then there's a strong likelihood that you'd get a similar extension to your house um, because the usage of both those properties both you and your neighbor's property is residential with commercial you have different commercial usage classes and so much depends on the actual usage class the commercial usage class of the building next door so if the building next door may be an identical layout but it might be a pub that will have completely different um, conversion potential to an identical building next door which is used as a news agent yeah so these sort of nuances with commercial property are absolutely essential to fully understand before you uh, embark on a commercial conversion project. I think the key thing with commercial conversions is to make sure you focus your firepower and energy at looking at the right types of deals in the first place. And these and deals are the ones that fit the template for permitted development. So you know before you buy that, yep, yeah, this deal fits the template for PD conversion. I'll get my permission in 56 days. I can build out simply in six to seven months. I'm out of the deal in nine month, nine to 12 months, and I'm ready to go again. That's what you want to be doing. And that's what uh, you learn uh, by attending my uh, online uh, eight week commercial property conversions course, succeedingproperty.com forward slash workshop. Well, what well, what I would go. say is it doesn't preclude you putting in a full planning app yes. for exactly yes. the same thing. I agree. And yes. I don't see that that would be unreasonably withheld because, you know, if it hadn't have been too generous, mm -hmm. you, you're absolutely right. It probably would have had PD. Mm -hmm. if, they, you know, if it's been done on the street and it's acceptable and the government and the, and the councils do accept that these shops need to be reduced in size, that's the whole point of the yeah. PD, yeah. they might see it favourably anyway. If I was to give you the, the 400 you need, that would likely be on a 50-50 split basis. So we'd be joint venturing. We'd be own this site and the, the, the profits from the site, half each. Right, okay. So if we were to sell it for 600 grand, we yeah. get back 300 each. But if you were to keep it, obviously I would need my 400 back. Right. And unless I'm staying in the deal, I suppose, as a 50-50 owner, yeah. and therefore benefiting from 50% of the, the rents, I would need my profit back. Is your idea that you keep the investor in this long term or that you take us out when it's done? It's your choice. Fair enough. I'm that flexible. Okay. I don't think it's quite big enough. I think, we you know, I do like these kind of schemes. I also love PD, done lots and lots of conversions, but they tend to be a little bit bigger. And if you're sharing it with someone else, it kind of dilutes it further. It, you know, it's the same effort to do this as it would be to build 32 units, which I'm currently just about to start building in Reading. Um, and so for me, it's, it's not, you know, not one for me on that basis. Okay. But you're doing great and uh, good Thank you very much. Journey. Thanks for your advice. Hello. Because of um, kind of what Paul and I have worked out with the numbers and that there would be money required to be left in, in the deal, yeah. that's not the way I kind of, that's not the investments I choose. So it's not for me, but well done for finding it. Thank I you. I think we've all learned something from, from Ranjan and yes. you have Thank to you. today. Thank so you for your advice. You can, you know, find something. Um, but no, well done. Thank you for coming along. Thank you. So for me, it isn't for me. It's the sort of thing I like to do. And I would, urge, from my personal point of view, I would urge you to contact me uh, later with a better deal well so, thank you know you. feel free to contact yeah. me because we've met now and i, I believe we could we, we could do something together thank you but not on this occasion thanks for your Ranjan, pleasure find a class e shop that's been there for two years okay. and contact me uh I'm that's the one two that offers this. thank you <laughs> thank you very much no problem but thank you that's paul okay. Yeah, look, I think we all want good deals presented to us, yep. so feel free to contact any of us. <laughs> um, but, you know, for, for, for all the reasons that everyone has said, and I've said myself, I don't think this is the deal for any of us, including you, you yep. but great yes. work I think putting it right. together and yeah. great work presenting it. You, you're on the right track as yes. far as understanding yes. how to find a good deal. But I think, unfortunately, Ranjan has found a hole in this one. And um, it's a technical so hole that not many people would. So thank I don't you fault you for finding the next one. I'd have had to check with my, my planning consultant to find that hole. I will look for next next time. Thank you. Keep going. Well thank you very good much. Job. Well thank done. you. Bye-bye. It's a good find. It's on the right track. A lot of opportunity in yeah. shops and uppers. But not all shop and uppers are alike. Um, that is the key. Uh, and I think estate agents and a lot of people don't understand this stuff. And that yes, four people might be bidding for it and paying cash but they'll all find out.
the nuances in due course. But don't you think that's what's so great about this show, is that even if someone comes and doesn't get what they want, they've learnt so much. Yes. And actually, we might yes. have saved them. Yes. Saved them from, from making a big mistake. So how does it feel now you're out the room? Oh, I feel a lot of relief. <laughs> yeah, that was really stressful. Now I'm, I'm still shaking, but it's a lot better now. Yeah, good shakes? It's a good shake, definitely. Yeah. I learned a lot. Good. That was a big experience for me yeah. in my career, I would good. say. Good, yeah. really, really positive then. Absolutely. I had lots of positive feedbacks and I've also I've got some exchange contacts, so which is amazing. Even if I didn't get the funding for this time. Yeah. But I've got a few more uh, deals already lined up, so I think, I think I've already got the investors. Great, so you yeah. can just go, go, go now. Absolutely.